How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Just uh, just got in from my early workout. Just kind of middle of the day over here. How did you get into to rapping into music? Um, I kind of got like a different story than most, you know, up and coming artists. I, I mean, I, I was a baseball player my whole my whole life. Um, so, you know, I was a kind of just your normal normal jock. Never did music really at all. Um, up until about six months ago, um, I you know I've been, I was a baseball player at Duke University out of North Carolina, and then um, kind of I think you you put this in your in your review, but um, I had a I had an injury. And that's kind of the reason why I'm at Georgetown now in D.C. But through that, that downtime, I just picked up music a little bit, started like, you know, just kind of messing around. It was all it was all kind of started out as a joke as far as making music. Um, and then it's just really snowballed really fast. Uh, got asked to do a song with an R&B artist out of Boston over the summer. And that was kind of the only... That was my first time recording in an actual studio, and I thought it would be the last that I really did, and, and uh, it ended up, you know, being a song that made uh, made a lot of internet websites and hip hop blogs and stuff like that, and then from there, kind of just ran with the idea a little bit, um, and it was actually just kind of, it was really a hobby up until about three or four months ago, and it kind of got serious fast, but that's kind of how I got into it. It's kind of a synopsis of how I got into it, but um, it's been a it's been a really you know very fast very fast thing that kind of just kind of just kept kept progressing and that kind of took me to where I am now so and the first track that really brought you to attention was College Humor wasn't it that's the one that really got the buzz going well yeah you're right that's the one that really um, that really like took over the internet hit it at all the websites and got a lot of coverage um, and we ended up shooting the video for it because of that but um, that's not the original song I, I first did is not College Humor it was a uh, it's a song called Club Fantasy, um, just featured on it, but it was kind of the one that opened up the door of maybe taking it more seriously. So, I mean, how did you discover that you could rap? Did you just have a go one day? Did you get you know, encouraged by a friend? What was it that you know got you into uh, it? You know, it was like, it's like I've always kind of done it to joke around and like, I would say, I would say I've done it just sparingly throughout my life, just kind of, I knew I could do it a little bit, I never thought I could do it. I actually didn't think I could do it um, on like on a record and be something that people really want to want to hear. <laughs> um, it's kind of crazy. It's still weird for me to you know I'm still getting used to kind of the fact that people want to listen to it. Really, it's it's pretty crazy. I mean, I just it's happened so fast. And uh, I mean, really, I don't really have a time where I'm like oh I, and I look back and like oh that's when I knew I could rap. Like it, there's no real distinct time like that. It kind of just all happened. Um, that's really all I could say. So tell us a bit about your latest track in this life, because as you know, that's the one that I love. That's how I heard right. of you. Um, how did that come about with the James Blunt sample? Right. Um, you know what? I was, I'm, I'm at the point where I'm working with a lot of different producers now, um, just kind of offering their, uh, you know, if they have a B or type of sample that I'd like to get on. And when I heard the James Blunt sample... I loved it, so I, you know, I was kind of waiting for the right time and the right concept for the track to uh, actually, you know, go on and record. And once once I wrote that song, I knew it was gonna. I, I really loved it, and I knew it was gonna be something that like, we could make into something more. So, um, really, the concept of the song is just it's. I wanted to. I came out, you know, with College Humor. I came out as kind of a, you know, like a college party rapper type, and um, I know everyone kind of put me in that genre but I think I'm more than that and I was kind of waiting for the right time to do that and I felt like In This Life and the James Blunt sample was, was a perfect fit especially for my story with the baseball and the injury and you know, Duke and George and everything I felt like it was a good chance to tie everything into a track so after we recorded the track I linked up with Loggy from a guy from the other side of the country um, he's from he's from California but he had a similar story in regards to the fact that he's the only other athlete who's rapping to um, so, thought that was a great connection, and it actually worked out perfect. So, in the video also was kind of a spur of the moment idea, and it all worked out great. You know, I had a, I have a great team behind me with as far as the videos go. Can't thank them enough, obviously, and it turned out great. It's done really well. Because what I really like about the track, because the first time I heard it, and it, when it was doing the verses, I heard the melody, and I thought that sounds similar. It's right. familiar to something. What what is that from? But it right. took me a while to place it until the sample came in, so I think you've used it really, really cleverly. 
Right, right. I mean, and that's and that's a hat off to the producer. Um, I thought the sample and the beat itself was, you know, perfect when I heard it. I, I really, you know, so I, I stashed that right away and again, kind of waited for the right time to put it all together. But the sample is perfect. I mean, it, and it really makes the song. Do you know if James has heard it? I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't think he. Maybe. I mean, I'd be. I'd be surprised if he had. I did send it to his PR for you the other day. Did you? Wow. That's um, awesome, man. I actually, I met James at the end of last year. I interviewed him. And, okay. And he's always looking for ways to break out and do something different because he gets pigeonholed into this weepy guy with a guitar thing. Which <laughs> he's just not at all. Um, right. So I sent it over to his PR, so hopefully she'll forward it on to him. Because it wouldn't That's surprise awesome. me if he hears it, if he would want to perform it. That's awesome. Wow. That'd be, that'd be uh, unbelievable. Thank you. I appreciate that. So what's kind of next with the music? Have you got an album in the pipeline? I do. I, I mean, the thing the thing that's kind of happened is it, it, it's usually, it usually happens a little bit slower in regards to um, dropping a debut mixtape or a rookie mixtape that gets some attention and then, you know, start doing videos. I kind of went the opposite route. Like, we kind of blew up pretty fast with one single and then, you know, the videos have been a great way for me to expand my, my fan base very quickly, but I haven't put together any project yet. I, I've, I've just been releasing singles because of how new I am, just trying to put out constant new music for free for people to get and, ex and expand my fan base, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking at probably end of the summer, um, a debut project, whether it be a, uh, you know, a, a mixtape or uh, an EP or even an album, I'm not exactly sure, kind of kind of wrestling with a few ideas. Um, if I had to guess right now, I, I, I'd say I'm still going to release a free mixtape, um, you know, as a, as a rookie project for everyone for free download. Um, and then from there, yeah, I feel like I owe that to everyone, put out a, you know, a brand new project for everyone for free, and then kind of work from there. But uh, for me, uh, on deck for me is basically keep continue to make music i'm trying to show my versatility with every new release so i got some new things on deck should be coming out in the next week or so that kind of just continue to expand what i just kind of show what i can do um and then another major video um on on the horizon with uh with a big um production group called rex arrow i'm not sure if you're familiar with them but rex arrow films uh there's a lot of mac miller videos he's a, a you know a very uh popular guy right now and a uh, white rapper in the states right now and then also he's done a few Kid Cudi projects as well so this is a a good opportunity for me and I'm excited about you know getting into that with them so it's going to be that's probably the next big thing I would say for me um, along with finishing up school baseball and, and doing getting busy with shows um, really excited about getting into that because I've with baseball I'm, I'm, I'm on a pretty tight leash as far as what my traveling can be and where I can go and how many shows I could do, I'm pretty limited. So I'm excited to get into that um, and, you know, get on a full-blown tour where I can go everywhere and, and perform and stuff. I'm really excited about that. Will you be coming to the UK, do you think, at some point? I mean, I hope so. I really hope so. I'd be, I'd be, uh, I'd love to do that. I'm not, in the, in the immediate future, I'd say, I mean, I haven't heard it. I'm kind of still, I'm still a fresh face here. I definitely, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to expand my, you know, my reach here in the United States, but obviously, I mean, I'd love to, if I could get up there, I'd love to. Well, we're flying your flag. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. <laughs> so have you got anybody lined up that you'd really want to collaborate with, or is there anybody, you know, if you could collaborate with anybody in the world, kind of, who would it be? Um, that's a tough, I mean, I've been asked this question before, and it's kind of like, uh, I, one of the guys I said was Mac Miller, who's the guy I mentioned, um, Kind of different styles, but again, kind of in the same genre, and I think he's a real talented dude. I'd love to do something with him. Um, but I mean, on, on a broader scale, I mean, I went to school with Mike Posner uh, at Duke and was good friends with him. Um, and he's, you know, he's an international star, as you know, obviously, and he's a uh, very busy dude, and love to connect with him at some point. I and mean, it's, it's just so, it's so weird to even say that, because I was at Duke when he, when he began to become a, you know, a household name, and it, I was never involved in music, so it's kind of weird to put myself um, even in consideration to, you know, to work with him on a musical side, but I'd love to do something with him. Again, I think he's extremely talented, and I have that connection with him. Um, so if I had to name two guys right off the top, I'd say those two. Cool, cool. 
because there's a, there's a track on your SoundCloud, isn't there, with Mike? Is that just one you've remixed yourself? Right. It was a it was a blend um, that a DJ put together, um, and the 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 DJ kind of hit me with with the idea, and he because he knew I had the connection with Mike, and um, I had to connect with Mike and basically you know go over the legalities of it, putting a song. Um, any anytime you use an artist's vocals, you have to kind of each artist has their own a case by case thing where they can basically decide what they want to do as far as giving out their vocals and charges and etc. So kind of had to work that out with Mike, but he had no problem with it, and we were able to we were able to do the track. It was an easy easy song to do because you know half the vocals were done already. But uh, I really liked I liked doing it. I thought it was a perfect fit for me. Like, and we did, we shot a little impromptu video for that too. Actually, on the way back from the In This Life video shoot, so that's on YouTube too. But uh, yeah, that worked out. I mean, I, I'm talking more of a start from scratch collaboration with him. Um, that I really be that would be a great opportunity for me. Obviously, um, I think it could be a really good project. So, what do you hope by the end of 2011? What do you hope to have achieved? Uh, um, it's tough to say, man. I wish I had an answer. Like, it's just I'm, I really don't have a gauge on what exactly, how fast, I mean, I have a decent idea how fast things can happen, but I just really like to keep progressing, um, and I know that's, that's general, but, uh, I think that by the end of 2011, I could be in a whole other plateau, I, I believe that, um, and I really just hope to reach as many people as possible, I feel like if people, um, if music reaches the people, I think they really like it, so that's kind of our goal, um, just getting it out to as many people, doing as many shows as possible. I'd love to be on the radio. I'd, I'd love to be on the radio by the end of 2011. I, I kind of have a few things, few, few doors opening in that regard for me. And again, that's that's a huge, not only an accolade, but a huge stepping stone for me um, to get on the radio and, and hopefully maintain some mainstream play, which I think my music can. I think it can. So that's kind of that's kind of the one goal I would say. I've noticed you're very active on social networks, on Facebook and on Twitter. How important is that for you as a new artist? Well, I think it's a big part of how it, it's happened so fast. I mean, I mean I, um, again, I was completely uninvolved in music about until about six months ago. And about three months ago or four months, I would say that, like, I was just a normal dude on Facebook. I mean, I, I literally had, I've been... <laughs> I don't know if you know the story behind Mike Stud, the name. That's not my. That's not my actual last name. Um, at Duke, we weren't allowed. We weren't allowed to have Facebook um, public websites because Duke Athletics was very strict as far as you know public websites. So we all had like incognito names, uh, and mine was Mike Stud. So I've been Mike Stud on Facebook for five five years. Um, so I was just a normal dude on Facebook, obviously responding to everyone, and then that, it just started becoming something where all, all these people I didn't know were friend requesting me and reaching out to me and saying hi and, you know, saying we like your music. And it was, at first, you know, it was, like, kind of surprising. And now it's, it's kind of part of the whole deal. But, I mean, my management and I haven't even needed any guidance from management, really. I mean, I know that if someone takes the time to reach out to me, I'm going to, I mean, I'm not to the point where I'm going to be ignoring people. Or, you know, I mean, I want to reach, reach back to everyone and thank them for listening and all that type of stuff. And it's also a great way to uh, connect with people and a great way to keep people up to date with what I'm doing that seemingly I've been now interested in it. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm hoping not to change anytime soon. I mean, I'm definitely visible on all those social networks and will continue to be for as long as it's possible. So, last question for you. What are you listening to at the moment? What's really exciting you musically? Uh, I mean, I'm a huge, huge uh, Drake fan. Um, I just think he's like, the most talented artist, really. I, I mean, I've been a fan of his since he came out. So, I mean, anything Drake does, I think it's, I think it's gold. I mean, I'm a, I'm a groupie, <laughs> but I, I really like Drake. Um, anything he releases, uh, another guy. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Uh, Big Sean is his name. He's a up and coming guy and definitely a, a very uh, you know, compartmentalized hip hop artist. Not, I wouldn't say he's international yet, but he came out with Mike Posner. He they came up together and did some songs together, so you might recognize the name, but he's a big-time up-and-coming guy here, and uh, again, someone who, his style of hip-hop and his flow is someone who I really, you know, think, think has it, he really has, has, what it need, has what it takes, so anything Drake and Big Sean do, I'm a fan of, I'm listening to, but 
I mean, truth be told, I'm listening to me more than anyone. <laughs> I'm always listening to myself, not only because, you know, I'm, I'm always kind of listening and picking apart. Even if a song's done and released, I still listen to it, um, kind of picking apart what I do and how I can get better also for the fact that when I perform, I need to have things memorized. Um, so I do, I listen to myself a good amount as well. <laughs> um, but that, that, that's pretty much it. Well, what I've found, um, when I've, because I've played your music to quite a few people since I discovered it a few weeks back, yep. and um, it's really interesting because when people see a picture of you and they say, oh, what kind of music is it? And I say, oh, it's rapping, really, really? And then they listen yeah. to it and they're really, really surprised. I mean, that, that reaction must be quite good for you because people look at you and then they yeah. listen and it's completely different. Definitely. I mean, I think that's, if I, had cre I think that's a huge factor in why it's, it's happened so fast, yeah. As far as you know, the exposure and, and people, I, I just feel like it, I got I got a major story in the Washington Post like before anything happened. Um, just because I was an athlete, and just because music, me like hip hop and and me and baseball and Duke and Georgetown are so completely different, you know, realms. And I've kind of I'm kind of the hybrid of that. And I think that's why I think that's why my story has kind of gotten out there so quickly. And I think the the stereotype of how I look and where I've been. And then combined with when people actually hear my music, is it's a good recipe for you know surprise and people are more interested in it and you know draws more people to it. So the attention's been good. I, mean, I don't think it's been a negative stereotype at all. I mean, I know I don't look like a rapper at all, so um, that's that's all part of it. But that's kind of I think that's a common reaction. But it's cool. It's good. Yeah, yeah. No, that's what I found. Definitely, definitely. 